All right, so yeah, as Barry introduced me already, uh, I'm Mateusz Krzyszowek, uh, and I came here today to tell you a bit about our journey, how we optimized the front end over the last year uh, for 13 million of our customers because I work for Allegro, uh, the biggest Polish e-commerce site you may actually uh, already heard of. Um, but for me, the journey starts a, starts a bit earlier, like one and a half years ago, when after experiencing um, quite a severe burnout, um, I was looking for something else. I was looking for um, a new opportunity. And I found this offer from Allegro's web performance team. Yes, oh, this, this way, F fine, all right. So, um, so one and a half years, uh, a year ago, I found an offer from Allegro's web performance team and I decided to join them. I decided that this is something for me. And because um, there are not many dedicated front-end performance teams in the world, I think, um, I, th I thought that it would be nice to start uh, with uh, telling you what do we even do on our daily basis. So um, there's obviously a lot of tasks that we take care of, but all of them can be divided into th those four points. First of all, we monitor if the site is fast. That's quite obvious. We want it to be fast and performant. We are conducting analysis and making investigations because sometimes it is not as fast as we would like it to be, and we need to know why or how to make it faster. We are implementing improvements um, that we found, and we are also educating and training other employees because we are only four or five people and in Allegro right now, I think works around 4,000 um, uh, workers. And it, for us, it's just an, not enough. We need to spread the knowledge, spread the web performance culture around so it actually works. Um, when it comes to our high level goal, what we would like to achieve, uh, obviously we want our page to be as fast as possible for every single user. Um, but we, if you would like me to make it a little bit more concrete, um, it is fine for us if our page is considered fast for at least 90% of all visits that our users make. Yeah, so I'm, I'm talking to you a lot of, about this fast word, and you may be wondering, okay, so what does it actually mean for a website to be fast? It may mean a different thing for, for everybody. And... Um, Fortunately, we already have some industry standards uh, around the front-end scene. Uh, the most notable one is the Core Web Vitals provided by Google. And they um, pretty much divided the feeling of, of fastness into those three areas. The first one is around loading, and it is represented by the largest contentful paint uh, metric. It tells us how much time it takes from the page being um, uh, fr from users starting to visit the page to the time that they actually can see a meaningful a meaningful a part of the content from their perspective. Um, the second one is um, connected with interactivity, and this is represented by feed. And feed tells us how what is the delay between users interacting physically with the device and browser being actually able to handle that interaction. And the last one um, represents visual stability. We have cumul something called cumulative layout shift in here, and it tells us how much the page is shifting when users are browsing it, uh, across the entire visit, um, because we don't want anything jumping unexpectedly on the page. Uh, something that's also worth noting is that there are uh, those intervals provided for each of the metrics, um, they are uh, captioned good, neat, improvement, and poor. And if you fit into one of those, uh, preferably the good one, then you will be awarded the score. Um, so just to give you a concrete example, how it looks like at Allegro, um, uh, we, I, I, I added here some screenshots. I also added one additional metric on the left called FCP. This is the first contentful paint. 
And uh, in comparison with LCP, this is the, the first screen that the user uh, see when they are visiting the page. It doesn't have to contain anything meaningful, just the first indication that something is actually happening, that the web page is actually loading. And um, as you can see on the example, we just have a, um, a basic wireframe being loaded, some search input. Then we have the LCP, and for us, the LCP, the most um, meaningful element on the page is the product, uh, um, uh, is the product uh, image. And then we have this beautiful example of CLS. As you can see, some nasty ad loaded and pushed all of the uh, offers down, and it made, it made actually the users clicking this ad by mistake because, for example, they just wanted to use the filters. And then when it comes to uh, feed, uh, let's say that the user would click on one of those offers and the time between the click and the page actually being able to take them to, the, to this uh, product is measured as this first input delay. All right, so we already know what we would like to measure, but how we would like to do it. Well, we have also some tool set um, that can support us. The first. Uh, Mm, the first kind is the synthetic tests that we can use. Um, usually, uh, it means that there is some kind of tool that is opening your page in a very controlled environment. Uh, the, the CPU power is set, the network conditions are set, um, and they are assessing all of, the, all of those metrics that I've already talked about. Um, what's cool is that there are already ready-made solutions that you can use, and they are free. For example, Google Lighthouse, which is actually built into Google Chrome. Uh, and if you would like to get fancier, then we have a web page test, which is a bit more sophisticated. They are also easy to run. Uh, you don't have to be on production. You don't have to actually have any URL to run the Lighthouse in your uh, Chrome browser. You can open the page locally and test it. The downside is that there are no re real users. Uh, you are just simulating everything. So um, measuring, for example, feed, which is based on the real interaction, is just impossible. So you won't get the full picture. Uh, we also have the re real user measurements. And this is the kind of uh, uh, tests where that are conducted. Uh, those are actually not tests, but we are just collecting the data from user browsers from you visiting the website using the JavaScript APIs that the browsers are providing, and we are sending it to ourselves. The downside is that when you are sending the data to yourself, you need to process it, you need to visualize it, unless uh, otherwise it's useless, right? Mm, there are some alternatives to this approach. Uh, for example, you can use a page solution. Uh, for example, from uh, Speedcurve, Akamai samples, there is also uh, something from Sentry, or alternatively, you can use some kind of a hybrid, hybrid solution when you use a ready-made library for collecting the data in the browser, let's say Perfume.js or the Web Vitals provided uh, by Chrome, and then you can send those metrics to your favorite analytics tool like Google Analytics. Those, this data won't be so detailed, but you will already have some slightly um, better image on how uh, your users are actually exper experiencing your website. Um, regardless uh, of the, the, the path that you go with uh, synthetic or, or tests or real user measurements, there's something also provided by Google called, called Chrome UX report. And what's cool about it is that um, uh, the, the, uh, Google Chrome is actually collecting the data from all of the users that gave con consent to it, uh, this web performance data. It's, um, and it's providing it for you for free. You can check uh, this report for any public website that there is. Um, you can check a certain, uh, either a certain URL or the entire domain. So we can, you can go to the Chrome uh, UX report and check, for example, allegro.pl, how, how we are performing right now or any of your websites. You are able to split the data by device, by the network conditions, um, and much, much more. Unfortunately, there is a catch. The first one that I didn't uh, list here is that the delay uh, is 28 days. So um, you have to have uh, some patience after uh, um, developing and uh, 
uh, deploying the improvements that you did to your page. And the other one is that it requires the page to actually be on production and have some traffic. Um, and there is this asterisk here uh, because some, of course, as as Google, they didn't then they don't provide a certain number how much visits you do need to have. Um, some sources say it's 800 visits per month, but also some so sources say it's 800,000 visits per month. So your mileage may vary. You can just check it. Sorry. Ah, so it's not mine. All right. Um, yeah. So, um, oh, and also I attached here an excerpt from uh, a screenshot from the Chrome UX report uh, from October 2020. So it's just uh, before I joined Allegro. Um, this was uh, our starting point. And as you can see, we also have those percentages here. They say how uh, many uh, of our visitors are experiencing the, our page uh, in those uh, intervals. So let's say for la largest contentful paint, only 82% of our users were actually getting it as fast as we would like to. And I remind you, our goal was to reach 90 in each one of them. All right. So uh, we set up, we set on uh, to start with uh, rendering times. This was our first priority. And if you go to the internet and uh, check how to improve the LCP, this, this rendering time, um, you'll find a lot of resources. So I don't want to uh, be repeating them here, but they all boil down, boil down to those three points. First of all, if you can have a fast render, uh, fast render from the server, uh, every millisecond that you save there will give you more time on the front end to uh, do what you have to do. Uh, second thing is that the number of resources that the browser needs to parse, for example, styles, scripts, before it is able to show the user anything, has to be as low as possible. And the third one is that you should let the browser know what uh, is going to be required to show this LCP. For example, if, you, if your LCP is a big background image of, in your hero at the top of the page, Let's preload the image so the browser already knows, all right, this is high priority. Let me download it as fast as possible. But in practice, what we did, um, we analyzed and cleaned up all of the head section. So we checked the styles that there are. We checked uh, every script um, and actually moved it to the end of the body. Anything that doesn't need to be in the head shouldn't be there. Uh, we even moved Google Tag Manager. Uh, but we did that uh, after analyzing that no data is going to be lost. So be careful, your my, my, mileage may vary again. Um, and everything that had to stay, uh, we started optimizing. If you would like to deep di dive deeper into the whole head section, uh, I really recommend the Harry Roberts uh, presentation uh, titled Get Your Head Straight. He explains every single bit um, of, of this section, how it should be structured for the optimal performance. So please, um, yeah, really uh, check it out. All right. So we were fighting for every percent. We were optimizing every byte. And really, we were closing in to our magical 90% of on the on phones that we wanted to achieve. And um, on the on one hand, if we were able to keep this pace, it was fine for us. It could even take uh, six months if if possible. But what we felt was that there is less and less space for improvements. We were feeling that we are almost hit, uh, hitting the limit, and there is still like four percent to go. So where should we find it? And uh, at this point, you may think, "Oh, right, come on, guys, mm, optimizing your head is not that hard." What? What is what is so complicated? Um, the, the the whole complication comes from the fact that the Allegro is built on mic, uh, micro frontends. I don't know if you've already heard the uh, term, but it means that basically it means that if you look on our homepage and uh, check the source code, there are many many boxes. If we highlight those boxes, it would look something like this. And every single thing that is dashed here in a different color. Um, uh, with those uh, few lines of CSS that I wrote, 
uh, is a totally separate component. And um, it means that any page or, on Allegro can be composed from a selection of over 500 components that we have in our registry. And each one of them is responsible for this small part of HTML to render. Each one of them can declare a different list of static files. Those are scripts or styles. <laughs> it also doesn't help that the code is deployed multiple times a day. All, of course, not all of them will change, but some of them may. And content changes are happening almost all the time, either by hand, by our content managers, or automatically. And this means that uh, doing some upfront improvements is really, really hard. Um, uh, what we ended up with in this situation was that in order to render a page, for example, a listing page or an offer page, users had to download hundreds or tens at least of small CSS files. And also it means that having this distributed independent parts, uh, it makes global improvement even more difficult but because anything that we would like to improve, you need to propagate over all of those separate repositories. We knew that we need to come up with something, otherwise we won't reach our goal. So if you are working with microservices, you are trying to think outside of the box and you just come up with another microservice. And this is how uh, the, the CSS bundler uh, came to life. Uh, it's working, basic working principle is that after this page is already prepared, we know uh, what kind of uh, static files are needed. We are taking all of the styles, sending the lists to our microservice, which is responsible for merging them into three, um, into only three files. And then we are re 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 uh, replacing the references to them in the HTML. Um, and as you can see, we deployed this solution to production uh, around uh, April and May, and we already experienced a huge jump of uh, almost 3% uh, on LCP for our users, despite having HTTP2. So if you think that the HTTP2 will save you from bundling your files, you'll have to rethink that. Okay. Our next priority was CLS. As you can see, it was abysmal. 80 per, only 80% of our users were, were happy. Everyone else, uh, they are uh, opening the page and everything's jump, everything jumps around. Of course, it was, wasn't that bad, but it wasn't perfect. Um, uh, when, yeah, at, again, when it comes to improving CLS, if you um, read through the guides and, and tutorials, um, they will give you a different techniques, but, but the basic principle is that you should reserve space for everything that is not server rendered or doesn't appear after user interaction. Because what's cool about CLS is that once user interact with your page, for example, they click something, you are giving a free half a second window where every, anything can jump around. Otherwise, I don't know, things like models, etc., would impact your CLS score and this is just not right from the user perspective. They are expecting that something is going to shift. But everything other than that, you either had to reserve space or suffer. What we did in practice is that um, we conducted a lot of tests. Um, we conducted a lot of uh, um, um, different improvements, etc. Uh, but the, what we found out is that it's very hard to catch or debug CLS without having those rooms or manual tests. Um, in your synthetic tests, for example, in Lighthouse, because there is no interaction, because the viewport is quite small, um, it's, it's likely that you won't see any problems with that. Also, tracking in browsers has, still has some bugs around the, the, this metric. We even uh, submitted one of them to Chrome, and I think it will be fixed in, in the up upcoming versions of the browser. Um, and it's especially painful for SPAs, believe me because since the uh, CLS is one of the metrics that are counted across the entire visit, uh, if your page is not reloading, the score keeps accumulating. So even small jumps are going to be uh, quite painful over time. 
And we actually had this on one of our few SPAs that most of our users uh, experience, which are the listing pages. Um, when you go to another page, there is not, not a full render, only, only the content changes. And we had this uh, advertisement banner at the top, which was pushing the entire, the entire list of uh, offers. It was quite confusing for our users. Um, but, we, but since it was coming from Google as an iframe, for, from an external provider, for a lot of time, we thought that there's just nothing we can do about it because we don't know if it's going to be there and we don't know what's, what, is, what are going to be its dimensions. But then we thought, okay, we don't know the exact dimensions, but what if we go with the good enough solution? Um, we are already providing Google multiple possible dimensions. So just let's take the biggest one, reserve space for it, and hopefully for more of our users, it will be all right. And this is the example how it, uh, how it um, uh, ended up with. You can see that we started reserving some space. It is not perfect. There is still this small jump because the banner ends up being a bit um, smaller. But uh, at the same time, it was good enough uh, for more of our users that over time we've been able to hit our 90% uh, threshold. So another lesson, something good enough is sometimes good enough is better than nothing. All right. But uh, I wouldn't want you to think that uh, working in a web performance team is only doing some cool improvements everybody loves. It's also fighting regressions, and there are some weird ones. The first one is still connected with the CLS that I already told you about. Um, uh, there was this huge jump uh, in this metric back on the listing pages. Um, we just thought, oh, no, not again. And what actually happened, the, the, our assumption that everybody is, uh, is served the ad was just wrong. At some point, Google decided, you won't get any ad, you won't get any ad, you won't get any ad. And at, at, at this situation, if you didn't get any banner, we were just collapsing the, the space that we reserved. Hence, we, everything was jumping again. So the lower emission of ads made the box uh, being collapsed and higher CLS. And the downside was that there is nothing we could do about it. It was the Google uh, mechanism, it's internal magic. But the good side was that after some time, it got better. Uh, our users were um, getting more ads. Uh, and at this point, we thought, OK, sometimes not enough ads is bad to, uh, it's better to have something than nothing. And we are also having some mysterious regressions. Uh, here you can see uh, three uh, metrics that I mentioned, FCP, LCP, and FIT. And uh, as you can see, um, uh, almost at the same point, I think at, even at the same time, each one of them was getting worse. Uh, we started to uh, wonder, wonder, okay, what is happening right now? Started investigating. Of course, first we looked into our synthetic tests. And this is the uh, web performance score that we are plotting from uh, Google Lighthouse. And as you can see, uh, there is this jump. So the score is better at the beginning, but this is irre irrelevant to, to this regression because it happened around in the middle. And anything other than that is one point fluctuation, which is nothing. So um, this is an example where static tests give you just uh, nothing. Um, fortunately, we found out that the increased traffic was happening from Chrome Web View. Uh, the visits were coming from mainly new clients. And requested URL URLs often contain those UTM tags. And we thought, hmm. We, we saw those UTM tags in, for example, email campaigns. So let's just uh, ask our marketing team if they know what is happening. And they say, yeah, we have a marketing campaign on Facebook. And much, much more people were coming uh, from the Facebook app throughout Chrome Web View without any caches. And uh, that's why our page got slower. And this is another example where you just cannot do anything about this. You can just improve your web performance so it's better for everyone, but there is no magic switch which will make the page faster. All right, so I told you about LCP, I'll tell you about CLS. What about FIT? Well, 
Mm, here I le I left it uh, for last because it, th this is qu some uh, it's a quite complicated beast uh, because in theory uh, every tutorial will tell you yeah just have less JavaScript don't block the main thread and everything is going to be fine. All right, maybe it's fine if you are going from three megabytes to a few dozen kilobytes of JavaScript and then you will see some kind of change. But everything other than that. Um, gives pretty much, uh, gets to diminishing returns very, very quickly. Uh, also, this current state of tooling and APIs that we have in the browser doesn't help. There's virtually no, uh, no way to tell what, uh, what was browser doing when the user interaction happened. So you just cannot optimize it because you don't know what it was. And the sad truth is that most uh, often, uh, those will be the third party scripts and try to go to your marketing, to your product teams, and say, hey, let's get rid of Google Tag Manager. Good luck with that. So, um, but just not to sound so uh, doubtful, I will leave you with this best correlation that we have and that you can actually control of your pages. And this is a correlation between number of DOM elements and the first input delay. Um, here you can see the regression that we had because we have we had one of those uh, smart weeks or bad black week or, or, or something when the content changes a lot on our website. And uh, we have this mechanism which makes uh, the content lazy loading uh, only once you scroll to it. So initially, the HTML is much, much lighter. Uh, but uh, since the new content was coming, somebody forgot to enable this, um, uh, this mechanism and users were getting the entire page on the, on the first visit. And here you can see once the number of domain elements jumped, uh, the feed almost jumped the same. And, so, and once we fixed that, everything got back to normal. So uh, be mindful about the number of dom, dom elements on your page. All right, that's a lot of complicated words, complicated things, uh, a lot of tedious work. Uh, you may wonder, why do we even bother? Why Allegro has a dedicated web front and web performance team? Um, uh, I, uh, in every job description, there is this line writes efficient, uh, performant code. So why do we even need this dedicated team uh, to do it? And why does, does it even, you know, who, who would like to even pay for that? Well, uh, first of all, um, what is good for our organization is CEO. So um, the... Some time ago, Google announced, uh, and this is already um, uh, um, happening, uh, that if your website in this uh, Chrome UX report is considered fast for at least 75%, so it's not 90, it's only 75% of your users, then you're going to get a small boost in your search ranking. So this is the first thing. Also. Once you, if your page is faster and lighter, it means that Google um, Crawler, which has a fixed budget for your page, can visit more of your sub pages. And since we have a lot of sub pages, like offers and listing listings, it was quite important and had a quite big impact on, on that. You can believe me. Another thing is our users and the business, because faster website means that users have better experience. They are less frustrated, both with our page and with the entire company. And since they are less frustrated and have better experience, they have higher engagement rate and the better conversion. They just spend more money. And uh, we knew that, but we wanted to calculate by how much. And we asked our uh, analytics team, and those are the numbers for Allegro for 2020. And they uh, and uh, they were able to come up, come up with those three statements that for every 100 millisecond drop in first input delay, uh, Allegro uh, loses 3% of GMB. For every 100 millisecond slowdown in first contentful paint, uh, we'll lose one and a half percent of GMB. And 100 millisecond slowdown in the largest contentful paint will mean half a percent uh, GMB. And if you take those numbers, take our improvements, and go to any business people and compare that with other initiatives, um, I, I, I assure you, it, it really uh, blows their mind that 
there's such a big impact. Okay, so in summary, first of all, know what 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 know what to improve, and in order to know how you improve and what to improve, you need to measure. Please do not start improving before you know how to measure it. This is something with we as a professional team, uh, which is doing exactly that. Sometimes we even fault for that, and there's nothing more um, daunting and and uh, um, yeah, and and making you feel uh, bad about the the work all you, the work that you did uh, when there's your change didn't have as much impact that you wanted it to have, and you are not even able to measure it. Second one is that without real user me measurements, you won't get the full picture of uh, the experience that your users are having. Uh, a lot of things, a lot of regressions will go under your radar and you will just not know it was there in the first place. The third one is that small, good enough changes are better than nothing. Don't be afraid to um, uh, experiment, to, to make something just good enough and see how it affects your users. But to see, you will have to measure. Remember that. And the, the last one is that it's worth to invest in web performance. Your CEO will thank you, your users will thank you, and your business thank, people will thank you for that. So if you're not already doing and investing into it, you can start to do so. It wouldn't be a complete journey without uh, giving you the results. So this is the year-to-year -year comparison, uh, October 2020 to October 2021. As you can see, we've, through all of the improvements and hacks and things that we did, we've been able to uh, reach our goal of having at least 90% of fast and happy users. Um, but I already know that our journey is far from over. There are much more things to be done. Um, and we also need to maintain that, which is another beast on its own. All right, if you would like to join us on this journey, then you can uh, check our uh, job listings. Um, but without any further ado, thank you very much. And uh, I'm open for your questions. Two quick questions. Uh, how What's much it? of server-side rendering are you doing at Allegro? And second question. Well, well, we said one question. So okay, let's, go ahead. Let's, so let's join it. I go will. ahead. <laughs> And exactly, yeah. Uh -huh. that was and. Answer, and second question: What are your next goals as uh, Allegro Web Vitals team? Thank you. Uh, those are great, great questions, uh, actually. So um, we server side render pretty much everything that we can. Um, if it if it is critical, then you need to server side render it. Uh, so it, if it's playing a role in any of those metrics that I told you about, you are going to have to server-side render it. Um, so as a rule of thumb, server-side render anything, everything, uh, I would say. Um, and in terms of our next goals, uh, we just have, first of all, we want to have, we want to reach high, even higher percentages for, for the, the um, uh, sub-pages that we already had. And we are expanding through more subpages because uh, we are paying attention to the entire origin, to the entire Allegro.pl and all of these subpages. But we also have divided metrics, for example, for home page, for offered pages, for listing pages. And there are many pages that receive a lot of traffic, but their performance is not ideal. So we are just expanding uh, further. Okay. Uh having to maintain uh, performance uh, once you attain it suggests that there might be some factors that might be lowering the performance. And for, for example, one of these I could think of would be, uh, for example, bad code practices, and maybe one of the ways to improve it would be training your team. However, what are some of the key uh, bad practices or key good practices that you would specify that would benefit everyone if they implemented them. Thank you. Training your team. That's a tough question. I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. Okay, so um, <laughs> I would be able to give an entire presentation on that, actually. Um, exactly. Uh, 
yeah, we have uh, we have the entire trainings in uh, internal trainings for for teams, and we are doing regular workshops. Um, but uh, so so and and we have the I think actually on our tech blog you are able to read about the the web perf culture that we are trying to build. So if you're interested, check our Allegro tech blog. Um, but when it comes to the most uh, uh, usual scenes uh, or, or bad practices, uh, one one I already mentioned: try to server side render your things. Um, don't throw unnecessary dependencies, or at least check how big are your dependencies. Uh, not everything has to be done in JavaScript. And uh, if you can do it in vanilla JS, please. 